Well, hey guys, did you know Trader Joe's has a new sunscreen that many people are calling a dupe for Super Goop's Unseen Sunscreen? I'm gonna review it for you in this video. I'm gonna compare it to Super Goop and I'm gonna tell you how it performs. But before I do that, make sure you are subscribed. If you like skincare content from a dermatologist, hit the bell notification because that is gonna let you know as soon as my videos go live. If you like short form content, be sure and follow me over on TikTok or Instagram. I upload reviews of skincare products and give skincare tips on those platforms as well. So make sure you are following me everywhere. So last week I ran into Trader Joe's after hearing about this new daily facial sunscreen and I was lucky enough to get it. People keep worrying that it's gonna sell out. My store had a huge stock of it. Uh, they had had it in the main skincare section and they had a ton of it up front. And so I don't know that that's necessarily gonna be a worry, but you know with Trader Joe's, they get some new product that people love, they sell out of it and then you never see it again and you hope it comes back. But anyways, I'm not really a common, I don't commonly shop at Trader Joe's, but that's my understanding of their business model. <laughs> Anyways, this product is like the Super Goop sunscreen in appearance, texture, and consistency. Super Goop's Unseen Sunscreen is $36 for 1.7 ounces, whereas the Trader Joe's Daily Facial Sunscreen is $8.99 for 1.7 ounces. Now the ingredients of Super Goop's Unseen Sunscreen and the new Trader Joe's one are pretty similar. They're not 100% identical. Like if you actually compare ingredient list to ingredient list, they're not 100% identical, but they are pretty similar. The, the, these are chemical sunscreens, both Super Goop and this. Uh, and the chemical filters are avabenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylon. Now, they vary a little bit in the percentages of the uh, active sunscreen ingredients, and I point that out not for you to get hung up on that, like is one gonna be more effective than the other, but rather to just let you know that there are some slight differences in the percentages of the active sunscreen ingredients in case you are sensitive to a certain sunscreen ingredient or you notice some differences in just how it feels. They both have 3% avabenzone. Homosalate is at 8% in Unseen, 12% in Trader Joe's. They both have octisalate, 5%. Octocrylon is 4% in Unseen and 6% in the Trader Joe's. They're both SPF 40 sunscreens and they are both water resistant for 40 minutes. Nitpicking on the ingredient list, the Supergoop Unseen sunscreen has microcrystalline cellulose, diatomaceous earth and zinc sulfate, like lower down on the ingredient list. And these ingredients may portend slight differences in just the texture of the product in comparison to the new Trader Joe's one, which does not have these. I have used both and in my experience with the Super Goop Unseen and this new product, I honestly see no difference in the appearance, texture, feel, look, wear. Neither product has ever burned around the eyes. They're both water resistant, as I mentioned, and so I find applying them around the eyes that throughout the day, they don't seep into the eyes and cause blurry vision, but some people are really sensitive around the eyes to chemical sunscreen, so just be aware that you may still experience some discomfort around the eyes with either product. This type of sunscreen, like the Super Goop Unseen and this new one from Trader Joe's, I love these formulas. They're not unique to Super Goop. People keep saying this is you know, a dupe to Super Goop. That's what I'm comparing it to. But honestly, there are a lot of other brands on the market that have similar formulated clear translucent sunscreens, which is what this is. Comes out clear and it has a soft, silky, satiny finish and it has a poor blurring effect. One of the main ingredients I believe that is responsible for kind of the consistency and feel of this sunscreen as well as the Super Goop one, isododesane, isododecane. Anyways, it's in the silicon family and it helps reduce water loss. And I think it's what really gives these a nice smooth, satiny, silky feel to them. Like the Super Goop product, this is a fantastic option as a base for makeup. And I really, really think you should strongly consider it if you have facial hair. Y'all know the struggle if you have facial hair with sunscreens, 
caking onto your hair, especially mineral ones, leave a residue that is even more unsightly and problematic than the residue that they leave on your face. This formula, like the Unseen Sunscreen, is great for hair bearing skin. Really great option. Like, I obviously don't have a beard, well, a really apparent beard, <laughs> um, but I do have eyebrows. So that's what I'm basing it off of, is how it performs in my eyebrow area. It works quite well. Let me know in the comments, so if you have a beard or a mustache, if you've ever used either of these. I mean, this is new, but maybe you've tried it out already. The formula, as you can see, it's translucent, clear, colorless, zero cast with this. This is a product I can guarantee is not gonna leave a cast. <laughs> I mean, it is completely clear, colorless. There's no, there's no color to it. It's silky, soft, and it has a almost demi-matte to matte finish. It's moisturizing. It's a good option for both oily and dry skin types, as well as combination. The formulation also allows for good evaporation of sweat from the surface of the skin, which is a major sticking point for people such as myself who live somewhere that's excruciatingly hot in the summertime. We get hot. If we have something on our skin that slows down the rate of sweat evaporation, it makes us feel hotter and it's uncomfortable and not a pleasant thing to apply, let alone reapply. This is a great option for the humidity, for hot climates. Definitely encourage you to check it out if you live somewhere hot and muggy. The other thing I love about this product is the ease of spreadability. This is something I really look for in sunscreens and when I'm critiquing them for review on this channel, I really do care about the spreadability. How easy is it to spread onto the surface of the skin? The reason I care so much about this is because I believe one of the major reasons why sunscreens can fail people is that if they don't spread onto the skin well, I think that lends itself to more skip areas and under application. You come across this a lot in zinc oxide sunscreens, for example. If they're not formulated well, they clump up and they're kind of sticky and tough to spread on the skin. This glides really, just hit the microphone. This glides really smoothly across the surface of the skin. You're not gonna have any problems putting this on, it's not gonna be as a time consuming of a process as some other sunscreens. You don't have to spend a lot of time rubbing it in. It goes on easily. Here is another unique feature of this product. Uh, the Super Goop one, you'll find this as well, uh, is that this works like a dream on your lips. It's like a lip balm. I find facial sunscreens they can dry out my lips, and for me, I can get a lot of irritation from putting facial sunscreens or body sunscreens on my lips. That's why I, you always see me using a dedicated lip SPF product, an SPF lip balm, but this is an exception. I love wearing this on my lips, um, and it stays on well. I can put it on my lips, the skin around my lips. <laughs> and it gives a little bit of a gloss and it stays in place really well. One thing I will point out, now this is a 1.7 ounces and I don't remember this quite being the case with the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. I feel as though I've had this less than a week and I've been using it every day as my facial sunscreen. I feel as though it's almost empty. Like I feel like Trader Joe's may have cheated me a little bit in terms of product that when I, because when I got it, I don't feel like there was product up in this top part. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it was underfilled. Maybe, maybe that's just me being a little bit hypercritical, but I do feel like I've gone through this pretty rapidly. Like Supergoop, the Trader Joe's sunscreen is not tested on animals, so cruelty free. If you have oily and or acne prone skin, I do think you're really going to enjoy this product. It doesn't feel greasy at all. Now, I have tried a lot of sunscreens like this, this type of formulation, clear, translucent, and I find that in some cases, they can stay feeling slippery on the skin. This does not. It actually, I mean, it has that slippery feel as you're putting it on, but it actually does soak in in some way or dry down, and if you touch your face later on, 
you don't feel like you have it on, you don't feel that slippery, slippery, silky feel. And I think that's good because for people who want to put makeup on over it, I actually do think that this would work well as a makeup base. As a matter of fact, I have tried putting makeup on over it and it worked just fine. So it does work well as a makeup base. Probably the best thing about this is that it is so inexpensive at $8.99. So in summary, this new product is amazing. I love it. If you have a Trader Joe's in your area, definitely go and try and snag it and give it a go for yourself. Let me know what you think about it because it is identical in performance, appearance, wear to the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen and it's a fraction of the price. Yes, there are some ever so slight differences in ingredients, but I don't think that that actually impacts the feel, the look, the wear of the product. The price point you can't deny is amazing. Sunscreen has gotten even more expensive with inflation. This is a great deal. It's hard to find an inexpensive sunscreen that doesn't look shiny, that doesn't look greasy, that doesn't pill up, settle in the beard area, clump. I mean, you know all the trifugalties that come about with testing out and trying out different sunscreens to find one that's gonna work for you. But I really think this is worth trying out because I think it's going to be a holy grail for a lot of people given the price point and the look, the feel, the aesthetics of the product. I think it's gonna be one that you're gonna really like using and reapplying, which is very important. That's one of the main reasons why sunscreens fail is that People forget to reapply them. This is one that you can comfortably reapply throughout the day. So it's great if you are, you know, spending more time outdoors now that it's summertime and, you know, going to and from running errands and things like that. It's a good idea to reapply. And a lot of people are like, huh, I don't want to do that. It doesn't feel good. This is one I think you'll actually appreciate reapplying. It reapplies easily, comfortably, and the spread, again, makes it makes it efficient in terms of application. So I definitely recommend trying this out. Let me know in the comments if you have tried it out. What do you think? Are you someone who has used Supergoop's Unseen Sunscreen? It's really popular. How do you think this compares to it? In my opinion, they're identical in terms of look, feel, wear, and performance. Do you shop at Trader Joe's? If you do, on the end slate, I'm going to put one of my Trader Joe's skincare review videos for you to watch because they have a lot of affordable products. So definitely check that one out. But if you guys enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.